Hey, welcome. It's about seven and a half months with Silver the Mustang. And I want to give you a, an update. This will be the last video that we are going to make here in Monument Valley. And hopefully you have enjoyed the vistas. <laughs> this is about one of the most beautiful places in the world uh, to live in. We ride, literally ride in the footsteps of John Wayne every day and Forrest Gump and all the other movies that have been made here. But uh, my wife and I and our dog and our four horses are moving to Oklahoma within the next few days. So this will be the last video here in Monument Valley. We're certainly going to miss all the people and everything and the views from here. But we're moving to Oklahoma where we have a lot better facilities. The next video you see will be shot in Oklahoma. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a couple of things today with silver. The first thing I'm going to show you is bidding up. And if you've never seen this or don't know how it's done, I'm going to show you actually three different ways that you can bit your horse up. Um, probably the simplest and most common way is to just bring the rein either through the D-ring of the cinch or you can use this little ring right here that is the, the ring, I guess that's for the breast collar. And just do it that way and then on the other side and then just tie their head like that. Now, let me tell you something about this, and please listen carefully. Do not do this until your horse is pretty good at giving his face vertically like this. Okay? Until he's pretty good, when you pick up on the reins, he needs to understand that he needs to do that right there. Okay? Uh, and Silver hadn't been ridden in a few days, so he's not real, really with it just yet. But your horse needs to understand that you want him to tip his nose. Don't do this until he understands that. Otherwise, you're going you're gonna to get him hurt and it's going to be a bad wreck. Okay. Now, the first time you do it, this method here, I don't use it very much. Um, but you can just take it and just bring the horse's nose back about an inch. So I would do it, if I were going to do it this way, see his head, there's his natural position. I'd bring it back about that far right there and tie it. Wouldn't be much. All right. And then I just let him kind of wander around and figure out that he needs to give his head like that. The reason I don't use this one very much is because a horse can really learn to push on the bit if you do it this way. It's, you're, you're, you're tying it solid um, and a horse can really learn to just lean on that bit. I've seen a lot of English people do this with jumping horses and English riding horses, and I've noticed those horses lean on the bit, and I don't want that, okay? So that's the reason I hardly ever use that method. Second method, you can take your reins, run them under the horse's leg, and then up over the saddle like that. Let me go ahead and do the other side. I do use this method a little bit, uh, but not that much. And then you just bring them up, Tie them in a knot right here. Uh, what this will do, let me just go ahead. I'm not going to tie it very tight. It's a little bit right there. Okay. That might even be, okay. That's enough to show you. And so what that does by running it under the horse's leg gives them a little motion with the bit. Let me move them off. Come on. Um, this, bit, this, this particular method, I think might be a little dangerous, especially if you have a horse that's not given to the bit. So I, I don't, again, I don't use this one very much. Sometimes I do. But you can see that when he moves his leg, then it puts, the bit is moving back and forth because his right leg and his left leg are, are gently moving that bit back and forth in his mouth. And that motion keeps that horse from pushing on that bit. And that's uh, very, very helpful. Okay. Um, but the, the negative thing about this particular way of bidding a horse up is the horse cannot raise his head. And sometimes horses can get pretty uh, freaked out by that. If they try to raise their head, sometimes it'll really freak them out and scare them. So I would say if you're going to use that method, you need to be very careful with uh, how your horse, you know, the horse needs to know how to yield to the bit pretty well. So now I'm going to show you the method that I use the most and the one that I think is the best. Okay, I'm just uh, tying the reins there to the saddle horn. I'm going to come over here and use these little ropes. And then I'll show you what to look for and why we do this. 
and old silver sometimes he'll follow me across the pen these days kind of depends on whether or not he's feeling like he likes me very well that day come on over here buddy let's get a little closer all right now with this method typically what i will do is i will bit him up with his head bent to one side or the other um, and I find that for some reason it just works better and I'm not really sure what the reason is so I'll bit him up to the left today so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this ring and snap it to the D ring on my cinch right there and then I'm gonna bring it under his leg I'm going to bring it up through the inside of the snaffle bit, and you can only do this with the snaffle bit, by the way. can't do it with anything else. Then I'm going to bring his head back, and I've done this with silver, I'm going to say probably 20 times at least. So he's, he's got it. All right. The first time I do it, I'd only bring that horse's nose back maybe, maybe that much. Second, you know, the next day, maybe an inch and a half. Third day, Fourth day, fifth day, maybe two inches. You know, I just gradually do it a little more each time. He's to the point now, after 20 or so times, that I can bring his, his nose back pretty far. Right there. He, he understands it, and then I just do a couple of half hitches here. I tied it around the saddle horn. And so he's going to be bent to the left. And now let me turn him around so you can see what I'm going to do on the other side. There, good. All right, thank you, buddy. All right. And if it makes him a little nervous, he'll walk off. That's that's his. That's how he deals with things. He just walks away. All right. So. Okay. All right. So maybe my camera girl can zoom in on now if he's going to let me. <laughs> All right. You just not one to cooperate today, are you? Can you stop right there? Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to ask my camera girl to zoom in since Silver's not wanting to make this easy on us. All right, so same thing. I'm going to hook it to the D-ring on the saddle right here. I'm going to come under his front leg, go through the, the, the ring of the bit, and this one I'm going to tie lower and looser. So I'm going to tie this one to the, the leathers on the back cinch right here. And it's not going to be as tight as the other one. Okay, about like that. So that his head is basically bent to the left. All right. And again, he's done this quite a bit. And that's actually even just a little too tight on this side. So I'm going to loosen it up just a little bit here on this left side. Yeah, about right there. Okay. So. Let me show you why I do this and why I think this is important. We are teaching this horse collection. And I told you on a previous video that, uh, I told you on a previous video that just bending his face is not collection. It's the beginnings of collection, but it's not collection. And by the way, when I first do this, I'll just leave the horse alone. I'll just walk out of the round pen and let him just stand there and mess with it on his own stand there for a little while but again he's done this quite a few times and you can see that it's not bothering him he's used to it by now in the beginning it bothered him a lot and so i didn't i just barely pulled his mouth back i didn't do much in the beginning because it really bothered him now he's gotten used to it and so every time he moves his foot back it puts a little bit of a back and forth motion on that bit let me put him into a trot Now we're getting collection because what collection is, is when that horse rounds his back like a cat and brings his hind legs up underneath him and brings his nose down toward his chest. That's collection. All right. And that's what it looks like. Uh, it could be even more than that. But the, what I'll typically do with this is either at the beginning or the end of the ride, I'll do this. Uh, usually for about five minutes, not for a long time. And what I'm looking for is I want that see that rope. I want to see slack in that rope. And I can see it. I could see it at a trot, not at a walk. I want to see some slack in this rope because what that tells me, now you can see it. 
that slack tells me he's given to that. He's not pushing on it. If he's pushing on it, that rope will be tight, right? So that's what I want him to learn, that his release is to bring that nose down, bring that nose down, and find his own release. And eventually you can work up to a lope. He's there. Okay. Uh, probably the first 15 or so times I did this, I did not lope him. Because I wanted him to get really good at giving to it. Come on. But eventually, I want to be able to collect this horse up at a lope. And if you'll do this from the ground, you're going to help you and your horse both. You'll both get better. And I go both ways. Even though the horse's head is bent to the left, I still go to the right because he needs to learn to counter bend anyway. He needs to learn how to, to go when he's not following his nose and when he is following his nose, like that. All right, good. So that's the bidding up. And you can see he's had a lung issue and, I, and he's been to the vet three times for that. And we thought he was over it, but apparently he's not completely over it. Um, and it's not anything that's going to kill him, but I'm sure it's uncomfortable for him. So that's the bidding up process and it teaches the horse collection. Now it gets a lot better under saddle, but th by doing this, when I ask for it under saddle, then he understands it. Now, <laughs> And you notice the title of this video, I'm going to go out here in the desert and I'm going to show you the secret to horse training. Okay, so we have come out here in the desert. We're about, oh, half a mile or so from the, from the barn. And I've been riding him pretty hard for about 40, 45 minutes. And my uh, wife slash owner of this horse wants to make sure that I say some good things about him. <laughs> she, she thinks that on these videos I am a little too negative about the horse and he's actually doing well so I apologize if it seemed like I've been a little too negative who um, but I'll say the the one thing I can say that he's really doing well and really probably just since the last video which was about a month ago he's gotten to the point where he will let me train him and what I mean by that is he's reached a level of trust and it took a while, you know, we're a hundred rides on this horse. Uh, he's reached a level of trust where he'll let me do things that he doesn't like. That's the best way I can describe it. Before that, if I did something that bothered him, like bump him on the shoulder with my leg or, uh, you know, put my spur in and make him move his hind quarters, he'd get upset and scared and jump away and kind of act all goofy. Uh, and I think that's mostly just because he didn't trust me. So I think that that's the big thing. He's letting me train him now. And so I come out here, and the first time that I brought him out here away from the barn, he was like a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. You know, he was just real. His head was straight up in the air. Every little blowing leaf scared him because horses, I mean wild horses, they've never been alone. They're always in the herd. And so he just didn't like being out here with just me and me telling him what to do. And so what I've done, I've just gradually each day gotten a little farther from the barn. And now I can ride him out, you know, a mile or two and he doesn't get too upset about it. But in the beginning, he really did. Because, now again, I think it's because he didn't trust me. So what I do is I come out here and I use these bushes and these natural obstacles to train the horse. Outside neck rein, inside bend your nose. If he doesn't bend his nose, then I put my spur in him on the inside. Say, bend that rib cage there, like that. Okay, and then we're going to go the other way. Outside neck rein. Bend your nose into the circle. And that's pretty important. He's got to do that. All right, and he's really good at guiding. Wherever I guide him, he's pretty good about going there. Unless he's trying to go back to the barn or something. And then I can use the side of this dry river right here, kind of like I would a, a uh, the fence in the round pen, but it's better. It's a natural obstacle. And I can come in here and say, whoo, all right, that wasn't very good. And I kick him on the shoulder and say, get around there. So see, he let me do that and he didn't get upset. And he deserved it because he knew better and he didn't do better. We'll come in and do the other way here, like this. Right there, Ooh. a little better, okay, a little better, 
come out of here. See if we can lope him around a little bit. There we go. Come in here. Pull. Better. Come on. Oh. So, I love this kind of terrain. And if you don't have this, you've got trees. You know, you just find whatever you've got. I guess if you didn't have any of this, you could put cones in an arena. You know, there'd be different ways you could build your own obstacles. You can build jumps and different things, but I like it. Nature's kind of put it there for me. And he just, he's got to learn to go up and down this stuff. And let me still control him. There, good boy. That's pretty good. Now let's work on stopping a little bit here. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to collect him up and say, whoa, that's pretty good. Back up. He would not have done that when I first started riding him. He's getting a little tired. So again, the tired, when he gets a little tired, he acts better. Let's go the other way. Collect him up. Oh, not as good, so I pulled on him. Back up. Back up. Come here, collect him up. Oh, and the reason he didn't stop as well there is because that's going toward the barn, <laughs> going that way. And he thought he was going home. So I promised you that I'm going to show you the secret to horse training. <laughs> if you're like me, you've watched hundreds of YouTube videos searching for the one thing. Remember the old City Slickers movie? And uh, was it Jack Palance? Just one thing. <laughs> okay, the one thing. All right, so I'm going to ask my camera girl to zoom the camera in. Hold still, Bubba. To zoom the camera in right here. You ready? Can you see that right there? You know what that is? It's called sweat. And this is now called a wet saddle blanket. That's it. That is the secret to horse training. Uh, this horse has about 100 rides. Um, and when he gets about two to 300 rides, he's going to be a pretty good horse. But he's not going to get to be a pretty good horse standing in the, in the stall munching on hay. You got to ride the snot out of these horses. You know, I'm not mean to them. I don't abuse them in any way. I just give them a job and make them get to work. And the more I ride this horse and the more work he does, the better he gets. That is the secret to horse training. And I mean that. More than all the other techniques I can show you. That you got to do that to get a horse broke and trained. Um, so the next video will be from Oklahoma. Lots of green grass and green trees. <laughs>